right, campers, it's movie time! Tonight's film is titled, Your Toothbrush and You. Now, kids, you can never know too much about gum disease. Oh, yes, you can. I'll have it fixed in a, uh, in a jiffy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> while, uh, while we're waiting for a repairman, uh, why don't I tell you about the time we made our own movie about Camp Candy? When I first opened the camp, hardly any kids knew about it. This place would be truly cool if only there were more campers to play with. I totally agree. There's hardly anyone here to impress with my designer labels. <laughs> or to share all these gnats and mosquitoes with. Ahem. Oops, <laughs> sorry, you weren't supposed to hear that. Oh, that's all right, Iggy. I feel the same way. I want lots and lots of campers to enjoy this place. But how do I let them know it's here? Advertise that every bunk has its own butler. Or maybe put out signs at all the pet shops. I've got a truly awesome notion. We'll make a movie about Camp Candy. A movie? Why not? A few camera tricks and we'll make it look like there's hundreds of happy campers here. That wouldn't be right. But I do like the idea of a movie. Maybe I'll see about running a video camera. A video camera? That's strictly for birthday parties. I'm talking about making a real movie with a real movie director. <laughs> now, Rick, who could we get to do that? My uncle, George Bixbeel. Rick's Uncle George was a real go-getter. He agreed to start shooting the very next day. Everyone pitched in to get the camp in tip-top shape. Everyone did their part. Camp Candy never looked or smelled better. Finally, it was morning. We could hardly wait for Rick's uncle to arrive. Uncle George! Ricky, baby, sweetie, long time no see. Oh, brother, how totally bogus. Your typical Hollywood phony. But then again, he might have important connections. Hmm. So this is the place I'm to immortalize on film, eh? It will demand every ounce of my legendary creativity. Now hold on. Cap Candy isn't that bad. That's right. It's worse. <laughs> but never fear. With the help of my assistant director, Rick, we'll make movie magic. Okay, crew, we're ready to roll. Ready to roll. Uh, Mr. Bigspiel, you'll probably need this script. I stayed up all night writing it. <laughs> uh, script? George Bigspiel doesn't work from a script. I make up the story as I go along. Okay, gang, enough chatter. Let's start filming our Socko Buffo Blockbuster. But I don't want a Socko Buffo Blockbuster. I just want a nice little film showing what a fun place Camp Candy is. Trust me, sweetie baby. I'm a pro. I know what's best. Wait till you hear this dynamite opening. Dynamite? It's a gorgeous day. The campers are all frolicking happily. la di da di dum Suddenly, you sense danger. Tick, 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 tick. What looks like an innocent basketball is actually a bomb. Oh, this is great. I don't believe it. With superhuman speed, you get rid of the bomb. Where it harmlessly explodes! Kaboom! Well, what do you think? All right, all right, we're ready to roll. Quiet on the set! Okay, kids, we're rolling. Now start skipping and frolicking. I always feel so stupid when I frolic. Me too, but we're doing it for John and the cap. All right, John, action! action. It's jolling along when you suddenly hear something ticking. Ticking, you realize it's a bomb. You bravely pick it up and you run to the cave with it. <sighs> Acting is hard work. No wonder they use stunt doubles. Gosh, is it lunchtime already? My stomach is growling. People, 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 what is going on? That's not in my script. He's really padding his part, isn't he? Whoa! 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 Oh, great! Now the bear is hugging the scene! I could see that Grizzly was no stranger to a basketball court. He probably played semi-pro with a farm team. A bear that can slam dunk? Oh, you're putting me on, right? Hey, would I kid a kid? I didn't know that the fake bomb we were using in our film was actually real. I think the real bomb in this story is the movie you're making. What terrific footage! What stupidity! 
tremendous action! What incredible nerve! That bomb was real! Well, of course it was, babe. Today's hip audiences can always spot a fake. I think I'm beginning to spot one myself. Are you out of your mind? That bomb could hurt someone. Wait, who is this vision of loveliness I see? Loveliness? Oh, me? Why, you're just the gorgeous leading lady type we need for the next scene. I am? Really? Oh. Nurse Molly's scene was even more dangerous than mine. But she didn't seem to mind. Now remember, you've been captured by a tribe of fierce pygmy Indians who set you adrift in a canoe, which floats downstream toward the waterfall. Now, John, baby, you reach down and scoop her up as she drifts by. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> isn't this a bit dangerous? No, don't you worry, John. Besides being a <laughs> glamorous movie star, I'm also a registered nurse. Okay, big knees. Release the canoe with feeling. You heard him. Release the canoe. Help! Help! All right, John. That's your cue. Never fear, Nurse Molly. I'll save you. Yeah! <gasps> Nurse Molly, where is she? Did you miss me? Oh, the question is, why couldn't you miss me? Great, kids! Just sensational! And now let's try it with filming the camera. That does it, Mr. Big Spiel. I don't believe you ever directed a movie in your life. Oh, yeah? Go on, Unc. Tell him how many movies you've directed. Well, uh, uh, none, actually. None? But you told me you worked in movies for years. That's right, uh, as an usher. Then you're not a director? Well, of course I am! Uh, the sort of. I direct people to their seats. Which reminds me, I better be getting back. We got a kitty matinee in an hour. Wait! Wait, Uncle George! What about our blockbuster movie? You're the talented one in the family, Rick! You directed! Oh. Nice move, Mr. Big Shot Hollywood producer. Thanks to you, there goes my entire movie career. Now, Camp Candy will never have a movie that'll make other kids want to come here. Come on, gang. <laughs> we all got a little carried away by this thing. It's just that Rick didn't know when to stop. No, they're right. It is my fault. I didn't think kids would want to see a corny movie about swimming and hiking and having fun with your friends. Well, it's too late now to worry about it. Right now, we'd better drive into town and buy some supplies to fix up this mess. Coming along, Rick? Nah, you better go by yourselves. Today it seems like everything I touch gets ruined. We'll sure miss you, Rick. When we returned from town, we had a little surprise waiting for us. Step right up, folks. The feature film is about to start. Feature film? What feature film? Uh, I don't want to give away the plot. Come in and see for yourselves. Have I got a surprise for you? What is it? Another Indian uprising? Yeah, Rick, we had enough surprises for one day. Listen, dudes, I felt so bad about Uncle George that I dug up some of the camp's home movies. And I turned them into a truly bodacious rock video. Great. Really, that was great. Good going. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, on behalf of the Camp Hand Campers, I'd like to present you with an Academy Award Oscar. An Oscar? For me? Oscar? Say hello to Rick. <laughs> campers, today we'll learn the fine points of the noble sport of badminton. So how come it's not called good name? Uh, we'll cover that in lesson two. Now, if you'll please serve the shuttlecock. 
All right. Now it's up to me to return it. Now we know why it's called badminton. <laughs> well, <laughs> no pain, no gain. <laughs> Speaking of pain, this brings to mind a little story. It happened during mail call. I'd gone into town on some errands, and Nurse Molly was handing out the mail. And here's one for you, Iggy. Totally awesome aroma, Ig. Is it a long letter from some luscious babe? Uh, kind of. It's from my Aunt Mildred. Uh, she works part-time at a pizzeria. And here's something for you, Robin. It's the Birdie Builder's bird seed. I asked my folks to send me. It's the wildlife weight gain formula. Birds around here are much too thin. It's the most important meal of the day, you know. Oh, this one's for you, Rick. Let me at it! Oh, wow! Let me see! No, Iggy, don't! Meow! I tried to warn ya. It's a bunch of practical jokes I sent for. Well, campers, that's all the mail I have. Wait, what about me? Oh, I'm sorry, Vanessa. I, I guess there's nothing for you today. But that's impossible. My parents would never forget my birthday. I'll bet this one's for me. No, it's for John. But look, it's from my parents. But it is addressed to John. I'll, I'll just put it in his cabin. Oh, all right. You just do that. After all, my parents wouldn't keep any secrets from me. Or would they? The girls were in their cabin answering their mail. Dear Mom and Dad, thanks for the birthday. My feathered friends love that. Dear folks, it was great hearing from you. And thanks for the neat gravity beats. Except for poor Vanessa. She had no mail to answer. What's the point of struggling to maintain my beauty? My parents don't seem to care what I look like anyway. And why would they write to John? Why, why, why? Aye, aye, aye! You know, if you try exercising, you wouldn't be so tense. How did I ever end up in this place? Oh, I'm funky with that girl and Dr. Doolittle Jr. I simply must know what's in that letter to John. I know. While he's in town running errands, I'll go sneak a peek. You can't do that. That's spying. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, I know. I do it all the time. Count me in, babe. This is my kind of action. Good. We'll do it together. Bodacious notion. Ugh. The girls flip out. We better look after her. There's the letter now. Oh, so near yet so far. Well, let's get closer. Just do what I do. Why are we walking like this? Because undercover agents always do. Come on, what are you waiting for? It's going to explode. No, but John might if he catches you reading it. <laughs> what are you doing here? We might ask you the same thing. Better hand over that letter. I'm not going to read it. I just want to hold it. Up to the light, that is. Well, imagine that. There's writing inside. Oh, dear. How clumsy of me. Well, as long as it's open, I might as well print it. Don't do it, Vanessa. Reading other people's mail is against the law. Yeah, you can end up behind bars. Now just hand it over. It's not your property. It's not yours either. Oh, no. Oh, no. A letter. You've heard the old saying. Half a letter's better than none. Here, Rick. You read it. I'm afraid to see what it says. We found her on the doorstep. A poor, scruffy little orphan. So we took her in and gave her a home. Please don't tell Vanessa any of this. Woo! We don't want to ruin her birthday celebration. <gasps> I, I don't believe it. Me, an orphan. Oh, Vanessa, but it sounds like you were a, a cute orphan. Cute spirit. What difference does it make? I'm adopted. <laughs> I warned her not to open that letter. Hey, what's the big deal? I know lots of kids who are adopted, and they're totally cool about it. You know, Vanessa, where other kids are cool, she's hot under the collar. Poor Vanessa wasn't handling the news very well. I'll say. She's having a combination temper tantrum and fashion show. Oh, I'm just a poor orphan, and I don't deserve any of these outfits. <laughs> And I definitely...
definitely don't deserve a solid gold credit card. <gasps> I'll bet Vanessa isn't even my name. It's probably something common and unimaginative. Like, like Jane. The minute I returned from town, I knew there was trouble. John, you've got to do something. Vanessa is gone. Gone? We looked all over for her. She's completely disappeared. Vanessa? Alone in the woods? She won't last a half hour out there. I knew with Vanessa missing, we'd have to organize a search party. I also knew we could use Nurse Molly's medical expertise. Ran away? What on earth for? When she found out she was adopted, she totally reeked. I guess it was the thought of having to return all those monogrammed clothes. Vanessa adopted? I wonder what made her think that. Oh, even if she were, doesn't she realize that adopted children are truly special? They are? Why, certainly. Their parents choose them because they're exactly the child they want. Boy, just my luck to get stuck with my real parents. We'd better start the search before it gets too dark. Meanwhile, Vanessa was headed deeper and deeper into the woods with nothing but a few basic necessities. Necessities? Those sure look like luxuries to me. It's a joke. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh, you know, laugh. <laughs> <gasps> An orphan like me doesn't belong in summer camp. I'll just spend the rest of my life here in the forest with the other homeless creatures. I simply must stop and rest. Brr, it's getting chilly. I just wasn't cut out to be a pioneer woman. Now I wish I'd paid attention when Alex gave those survival tips. They may not find me for months, but when they do, I want to look fabulous. And at $70 an hour, I won't smell too shabby either. Hey, you! What's that awful smell? Oh, I got Mel Stinker. She's destroying our air quality. We'll have to fumigate for days to get rid of that odor. Oh, calm down, dear. This may help. <laughs> Ah, that's more like it. What is that? Oh! Meanwhile, all of us were desperately scouring the Gimiguchi woods, searching. Vanessa! Vanessa! When suddenly Iggy spotted something. Yes! <laughs> Snake! Vanessa's hair dryer. Do you realize what this means? That she's got a bad case of the frizzies? Besides that, it means that she's somewhere right around here. No! Oh. <laughs> monster? May I? Uh, what the heck? Thank you. It's hideous. Hideous? I may be adopted, but I still got feelings. Vanessa, it's you. It had been a pretty rough day, so I didn't scold Vanessa about opening my mail. The fact is, I didn't have to. She was punishing herself enough. It serves me right. If I hadn't opened John's letter, I'd never have found out that I was a scrawny ragamuffin left on some doorstep. Wrong, Vanessa. The truth is, you're not the orphan your parents found on the doorstep. <gasps> I... I'm not? Then who is? She is! <laughs> your parents found her and decided to adopt her. She was the birthday surprise they wrote me about. Oh, my adorable little ragamuffin. And now, <laughs> oh, one more birthday surprise. Happy birthday, birthday Vanessa, Vanessa darling. darling. Mommy, Daddy Kins. <laughs> yes, it's us. <laughs> Your mommy and Daddy Kins, who love you very much. <laughs> and we'd love you just as much, whether you were adopted or not. Now, don't you worry about that puppy. We'll look after her until camp is over. <laughs> and since she's adopted, we just know she'll get lots of extra special loving. Hey, Vanessa, what are you going to name the pooch? Probably something like Princess Fifi, the smorgasbord the third. Right? Wrong. I think I'll call her 
Jane. Robin, Alex, I've been thinking what a 